What is up, App Nation? Welcome to another YouTube live stream. I'm in a different spot right now. I'm in an office, and as you can see, not the best lighting. I have to read. I just got a new MacBook Pro, and I didn't know everything was USB 2. So I would have been over there in that seat coming to you live, but now I'm here. So we'll make the best of it. But today, I want to say hi to everybody. Leandro, what's happening, my friend? I'm going to give you this shout out. Good to see you every week, bro. Vinyanyek, what's up, brother? And then we've got all time funny videos. What's up, brother? Hey, I want to spend today, it's just going to be me. So I want to kind of walk you guys through. There's a lot of ASO strategy questions. I want to walk you through some of the things that we're testing on our end and then also audit some of the apps that you guys have submitted. So if you guys want to submit your app for a possible review, just go to appmasters.com slash audit. And oh, by the way, my kids are selling things. If you guys are interested, these little headphones, this headphone that I've been using the past couple of streams and my, my daughter selling a women, girls empowerment, girl power mug, coffee mug. So if you guys want to check that out and support my kids, go to appmasters.com slash kids and you can see some of the products that we have up for sale and just teaching them about business. So yeah, yeah, look at Vishal is here. What's up? Uh, Daryl, what's happening, Daryl? Good to see you, bro. Engine Peers, hey, everyone. Adolfo, awesome. And then Vishal, long time. Okay, so does the audit cost anything to do? No, it doesn't. I want to do a, a giveaway as well. So stay tuned for maybe next week where we'll we'll do some giveaways during this stream for those who are showing up live. All right, let's get into some of the things that we have in store and then feel free to leave a question in the comments below as well. So I will show you my, no, this is not the good one, this one, boom. All right, so I've got some of the ASO tools that I like to use up, ready to go for you guys. App Radar, App Follow. So here's what we got in store. And this is what was meant to do yesterday or last week, I'm sorry, but here's the app email me. So we're going to go into some of the things that they have a question about. And then the other app is jokes for everyone. This other app. So hope, hopefully you guys are all here. Fit to do body weight AR exercises. And this one, see, look, you submit an app and your website's not even up. So make sure your website is at least up or your website or your app is up. So if we can get to that, we'll get to it. If not, we won't as well. So let me, let's get into some of the questions we have for this. Let me check this out. Things to increase downloads. Manuel says, email me notes. Okay, cool. So let's get into this one first. And then as you guys ask questions, I'll give shout outs too. As you guys ask questions, we'll get into some of the questions as well. So this app, email me notes in your inbox, capture thoughts, ideas, and more. Okay, it looks like it's a note-taking app. I don't know why it's called email me. So think about that, Manuel. I love the screenshots here. The fastest note-taking app, email yourself, email yourself, okay, a group or your notes app. That's how I actually like to do it. Capture thoughts, ideas, and more. Save time, be productive, important, just send it to yourself. You Siri, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so one of the things that I always feel like is when I hear the fastest note taking app, tell me why you are the fastest. Okay. I love the fact that you have this featured app store. I might make that more prominent. Like this is cool, this little plane, but bring it up more, right? The fact that you've been featured by app store, it gets kind of lost at the very bottom, but bring it up more and tell me why capture thoughts. I get it, but you're not still telling me why you are the fastest note taking app. And when you make a claim like that, I really want to know why, right? So tell me why, because you're just saying it's the fastest, but why are you the fastest? So it says right here, send notes to your email in one tap. Okay. That's interesting. Or maybe take notes in one tap or record yourself. So tell me why I just don't know why. And I'm always reluctant when you say you're the best, you're the easiest, you're the simplest. Why? 
why are you? And I guess the example I would give is I heard an interview from hotel tonight and you know, I think they are really simple and they really made it an effort to make sure that you could book a hotel in three taps or less. So think about how you can utilize some of the, and that is a fast hotel booking company, right? Then you say, look, you can book your hotel in three taps or less. So that's one way. Let's look at some of the monetization you have for this particular app. looks like a yearly subscription, $5 quarterly. All right, let's, we will, we'll get into some of the app stuff too, and I'll try to get into this. I don't have my complete setup, so I'm going to try to do my best in terms of getting the, showing you off the app without having to somehow show my phone. <laughs> All right. So I'll get into that a little bit in terms of creating downloads. Look, I do think that, you know, my friend Ryan Kelly said this and I don't, fully agree with him but in a facebook group and i want to bring him on and kind of hash it out together but he said keyword optimization is is not as important now i kind of disagree because we've just seen stats where key, keyword optimization does actually help and so think about the keyword optimization here i think the note taking like notes in your inbox i don't think that's keyword optimized right so think about the keyword optimization in your title whether it's note taking anything else you seem to have a good number of reviews, capture thoughts. Again, this is the big mistake. I put this put video up. I always see this title and this subtitle is more branded, right? Capture thoughts, ideas, and more. They're more branded than they are actually optimized for keywords. So you definitely want the best keywords like note taking or whatever it is in here. And so one of the workshops I would do, if I was doing keyword research for this app, I would go into app follow right now. I go into the search ads recommendation and I, I apologize for those who have been following me for a long time. You probably guys already seen me do this a ton of times, but this is what we typically do. And then I'll put this app in here and you can put this for your competitors as well. Let's see if it's going to find it. Let's try email me notes. Cool. All right. So here are all the, the keywords that you can start using, right? Siri, Siri voice, inbox, quick thoughts. That's interesting. And you can see the, the 39 quality score. That is the search score. So now it's like, oh, interesting. I wonder what the competition is. So I follow won't give you that, but let's see what quick thoughts burn. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a survey app, so you probably don't want to rank for that. Email cleaner, watch me grow. So based off of what you're currently using in terms of your metadata, this is what Apple Search Ads is going to recommend as keywords. I think it's the wrong keywords that you're probably using. So I would try to go after note taking and something around that realm rather than what you currently are going after. Because your app name says email me, it's sort of confusing that it's actually a note taking app, not an email app. And a lot of these keywords are related to emails. So let's, let's go back and let's say note taking. Uh, here, this is a good one because this is an app that's extremely popular. Good notes. while this loads let me grab some water i see some of the questions coming in thank you guys thank you guys oh by the way if you guys are watching this live please share it out you know tag me on twitter instagram wherever you are i saw somebody post this on their instagram stories i'm just at steve steve p young pretty easy to find so linkedin twitter instagram just tweet at it i want to do something special for you guys all right so here so good notes notes obviously notability good notes guy so these become better keywords for you than what you currently have. So whiteboard, notepad, I'm trying to find some, as you can see, they all have pretty good, con the, what I'm trying to say, pretty good tr search traffic. And so these become keywords that you actually want to target rather than this. Look at Notas, what's this? Let's figure that out. Cause it has good traffic, but I wonder what it is. Notes, okay. So it could be just like, I think maybe notes in Spanish. 
So this, I love this, right? Like this could be a particular keyword that you can try to tra target. And here we can do this too. So no tasks, I'll put it into App Radar, right? Go to keywords, tracking. So what I typically do is copy and paste all this because up here, you can hit copy right here, click here to copy. And then I'll just copy and paste into Excel spreadsheet and then take that spreadsheet with all the keywords and put it into App Radar and then get all the different, I was doing this, and this is gonna be a future, so it's a little hint. We, I did an ASO for this person who submitted, Rudo, Rudy, who submitted an app audit, and I was like, hey Rudy, I think your app is a great fit, let me do the free ASO for you, and let's use you as a case study later on. So that's the cool advantage of you guys submitting this, and then I'm, I'm gonna share with you exactly what I did for Rudy's app, but I wanna delete all these keywords. remove and then we'll just add this keyword notas let's see because what i'm trying to find is does it have high difficulty we saw the search traffic score here on apple on app follow but i want to see what the search or the difficulty is so again take notes better write to text these are a lot better note taking app it's not that much traffic but these are a lot better keywords than your notes in your inbox okay that's what i would say manual and then let's just put no toss. Next week will be a lot better. We'll have my MacBook Pro. It's going to be so cool. The lighting's going to be better. Bear with me. It's like a bad first date. I can't wait to get it. No toss somewhere. No toss. Cool. Difficulty is not too bad. It's somewhat difficult. There's a lot of apps for it. So maybe not the best keyword, too branded, but think through that strategy too. And then what I would say is anytime people are, because there's a lot of questions about how do I increase downloads? How do I increase downloads? Look, sometimes you're going to have to spend some money. So I'm going to have a an upcoming video later on about like side hustle strategies. These are marketing strategies that you can use to grow your downloads without spending under 200 bucks. And one of the things that we're gonna try on a couple of different clients is giveaways. So for one client, we're gonna, they've got a pretty decent Instagram following, about 12,000 followers, and we're gonna try a giveaway. And we can say one year free, which we can use as a promo code with an App Store Connect. So one year, year free, tag your, tag your friends, you know, the whole thing. And I'll give you guys an example of a friend who just did it for these headphones as well. So if you guys want to play around with it, but it's a great way to try to drive more downloads. And it was a strategy that James told me about in a podcast interview that he uses where he just goes live on Facebook and said, Hey friends, I've got an app out, go check it out, go review it, go review it. Let me know what you think. And I'm going to give away hundred bucks. And so you can start utilizing these type of strategies. If you're not, if you're trying to figure out like, how do I grow downloads? Well, you're going to have to get really creative in these things. So that's what I would say. And I'll show you guys the Instagram post that you guys can see it too. All right. Let me give some shout outs to some people. Reza, what's up? Joe, good to see you, brother. And then we got Andy, first time here, a new follower. Good. Well, welcome, Andy. You're late to the party, but late is better than never, I guess. And let me pull up the um, giveaway to give you guys an example of what you can do. And what I'm gonna do is amplify the giveaway. So I want them to share it on their own so social media, but I also want other people, and I'll show you guys, once I figure out how to do this, and the results, I'll show you guys exactly how I'm gonna do it, but I wanna amplify it. I don't wanna just share it on my own social media platform. Now I'm even gonna test out a giveaway on my social medias. So stay tuned for that, and I'll share with this. Okay, Joe, what's up, dude? Andy? Do you always need a privacy policy for any app? I think there are better questions on here. Okay, yeah. So I'm not sure actually. Engineer Pierce says, Apple requires a privacy policy to submit to you. Yeah, that's right. Within App Store Connect, it does say like privacy policy. So you can link to it. So Apple will require that. Reza, what's up brother? Thanks for all the hearts. All right. And then Joe says, app on the text looks really awkward. Joe's got great insights on this. So let me show what Joe is talking about. Yeah, the fast, okay. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about, Joe. I think it's 
what we used to call like, ah, oh, man, wonder what they used to call it. But anytime that there's just one word on a line of its own, we try to remove it. And I think that's what you're referring to. This is back in the day. All right, let's see. Reza has a question. I will remove this. My first question is about localization. I localize my app for the US and Spanish Mexico, and I want to localize my, my, my app for Chinese. I want to know, should I use some of my keywords from US or should I use them all different keywords? Reza, explain to me exactly what you're doing because if you're trying to localize it, you know, figure out what keywords are in Chinese, right? Like it's pretty simple. I shared a video in the past where you can use Apple search ads to find the right keywords for localized to translate, have Apple tell you what keywords to use. And so that's a great way of doing it. If you can put an app, your app into Apple search ads, and then within Apple search ads, pick the country that you want to target and put Chinese or China. And then within the keywords, you know, Apple start recommending some keywords. Well, they're going to be in Chinese. So that way you can find out like, Hey, what keywords should I be using that are already localized? You can use Google translate just to see what those Chinese words actually mean, and then go ahead and use those keywords in your ASO. Hope that makes sense. And I hope that answers your question. So let me know if I did not. All right. Khalid. Hi, Steve, you rock Khalid. You rock too. Thank you so much. Vignette says, does releasing updates for app and responding to reviews using keywords help in Google Play Store ranking to help my app? Vignette, I actually, so I've seen mixed results with this. I said this, I said, hey guys, in 2015, we used to be able to hack keyword rankings by having keywords in app store reviews. And this was especially true on iOS. And we saw immediate boosts in keyword rankings. Now it's not as effective today, but what I did recommend to people were try responding to reviews with the keywords that you want in there. And we've seen mixed results. One client, one person emailed me and said, Steve, it worked. It's beautiful. Love it. And another person and the same person said, but for another app of mine, maybe it was too competitive. It did not work as well. So I do think that it doesn't hurt, right? It's easy for you to leave a review for your app. If you guys have never done it, definitely go into the Google Play platform and the iOS platform. Google Play, not familiar with iOS as much on this regard, but in Google Play, like they'll tell you, they have like pre-canned responses that you can use and then you can mix and match. So really easy to respond to those reviews, but we are testing that. That's one of the ASO strategies we are testing. Okay. Do you just review app or both, Andy? So he said, yeah, thank you, Joe. Joe, you're the best. All right. Hi, Romaine. What's happening, brother? Oh, okay. Reza. Okay, here. Reza responded. Imagine, Reza, you're like a, you sound like my son. He always says, imagine. Imagine I localize my app for the US and China. What happens when a Chinese guy searches for a keyword that I use in U US localization, not Chinese? So there's always a default language and it's typically the US or wherever language that your developer account is in. So I wouldn't worry about that as much. If it's in the US localization, there's always a default one that Apple defaults to and the keyword is already in there. You don't need it in there. So in the Chinese localization, just focus all on Chinese keywords. I hope that answers your question. Uh, Reza, I want to know if Chinese searches a keyword that I use for the US, then do I appear? Yes. So the answer is yes. Flutterist says, I submitted my app yesterday. Is it possible to check? Hell no, Flutterist. I've got a long list of people ahead of you, my friend. So sorry. Hey, James is here. What's up, James? Thanks, you, thanks for the giveaway strategy. So on that note, because James is here, James, you inspired me, brother. So we are going to test this giveaway. And I was inspired by my friend who did this giveaway too. So here, I'll show you guys his giveaway. Here it is. Head sharp. Go check out the app. It is a great app, if, especially if you're into sports. And it's really meant for like high school sports athletes and getting, it's like meditation. And, you know, I've done this a couple of times where I'll meditate and do like a performance meditation to get your mindset right before you go into any like competition. Mm -hmm. So they, he did a giveaway. It's Chris, thank you, Chris, for doing this on this particular headset. And he said, you know, Head Sharp has teamed up with Master Creators. That's my daughter came up with that name. For our cl first collab, we'll give you away this thing. Like this post, follow Head Sharp, tag two friends, share to your stories for an extra entry. A winner will be announced, blah, blah, blah. And he told me how he did it. So this is a great way. And I want to try different things. Kind of like James, he says, look, I'm going to give away $100. Go download my app, go rate it. There are things that you want the, the people to do. 
this is just for following, but obviously James does it for downloads too. And you can mix and match the different ways. What I want to do, because Headsharp already has a great following, what I also want to do is see if we can actually amplify it. And so there's a website called, and I'll just share with you guys everything that I'm going to be doing. Again, I don't have the results. So if you guys want to test it with me, do me a favor. If you guys do go use this strategy, just let me know what the performance is and I'll share with you what our performance is. So you can go to shout card and you could have other influencers sort of like repost. And that's my idea. Hey, repost this particular message on Headsharp and you can just pay them $20 to up to hundred, up to 200, depending on who you want to look at and just get them to repost that particular giveaway. So that's the strategy I'm trying to use. And you can, so let's say I was with head sharp. So it's more about sports, I guess. So you can say, Hey, go into sports. Whoops. Yeah. Different categories. All take them out. This is my little MacBook air. So freaking slow. Okay, good. Air. Oh, hey. Okay. Let's see. And then go to sports here. And you can see the number of followers they have. So you can these sort by, I have to sign in, I can sign in, but then you just go through that. And so that's one way I want to test it out is how do we do a giveaway? How do we very much run a campaign that drives downloads and hopefully social media shares for you guys too, and also within a very low budget. So that's what I would, that's what I'm going to be testing, but that's essentially what I'll be doing with these giveaways. So thank you, James, for the inspiration. Thank you, Chris, for inspiring me again. Once two people tell me the same strategy, I'm like, mm, I should probably test this out. So we are going to be testing this and giving, doing a giveaway for an app, like one year free of the app that we can sort of, we can control and we don't need development work too. All right. Let's get into some of the questions. Hope that was helpful. Let me know what you guys think. Um, all right. Oh, yes, I, I answered this. I need a producer. Flutter says, what should be the search traffic rate for a new app? So I would say, let's go back to this Flutter. Maybe I should always have this up my, I would say at least a 20, 30 and up better. But if you can find the difficulty keywords, the lower the difficulty. So I'm using App Radar right now because I pay for App Radar, just FYI. They are a sponsor, but I also pay for them as well. So the, here are the keywords that you want to try to find. Let me see if I can find some lower difficult keywords that we used for this particular app. You want at least 30, in my opinion, the higher, the better, but these are the low ones. So anything under 30 in terms of difficulty are the ones that I try to target again, this, because this is a niche app, there aren't too many that were high in traffic, but at least a 30 and at the very minimum, a 20, if you can get it. And with newer apps, because if you're not, especially if you're not doing any paid acquisition, you want to focus on those lower traffic keywords as a mixture of them. All right. And he says, okay. Yeah. Thanks brother. All right. Vogue tech. Have you seen any effect on having one keyword in title subtitle and keywords section versus having it all in one of these places? Okay. Vogue I think what you're trying to say is duplicating the keywords in the title subtitle and keyword field. I've, I've tried that. I haven't seen too good of results. So back in the day, it was actually something that worked well where you're, you would have a long title and repeating the same keyword multiple times actually helped out a lot today. I haven't seen a huge effect in that. So I feel like it's wasted characters. I did talk to somebody in the audience who did say it worked for him and he had the same phrase in the title, the subtitle and the keyword field. But when I tried it for multiple clients, I didn't really see that big of an effect. So I think it depends on the keyword too. I think that a lot of it depends on the app. Andy, so Steve, sir, what would be the legal process if the app references information about a certain activity or animal that says something like running increases cardio? I'm not sure, Andy, and I'm not a lawyer, so I want to stay away from these type of questions to not get sued, <laughs> but I'm not sure, frankly. So I would talk to a lawyer and 
yeah, I would just talk to the lawyer about this. And I've, I've seen other things where it says results not typical, you know, like small little font. So maybe there are ways that you can get around it using that, that type of language, but I'm actually not sure. And I would need to know a little bit more information about your app and what you're trying to say before I can make any judgment. But again, I'm not a lawyer, so I have no idea. Okay, this sorry you said this. Khalid said, hey, Steve, which one is better? Sensor Tower, App Radar, App Follow. App Follow, I like for in terms of like coming up with new keywords and it's free. I I actually switched over from Sensor Tower to App Radar, frankly, because the the data was very similar and App Radar is a lot cheaper. So <laughs> that's why I did it. All right. How does one make sure that information is correctly used and will not get sued? Again, Andy, talk to a lawyer, brother. All right. Khalid, Google at keyword suggestion on Google ads are much effective. Khalid, I'm not sure exactly what you're trying to say, but I think what you're trying to say is, are the keywords that Google ads are recommending to you, are they effective? And I would say, yes, try them out, right? It's all about testing. Okay, cool. A lot of great questions. All right. Two Pens Media. You sound familiar, Two Pens. What's up? Sorry you're late. Hey, better late than never. Dimitrios, what's happening, my friend? It's like a good community that shows up. Oh yeah, I made it on time. All right, well, welcome to D. And then Andy, whoops, man, says, totally cool, good answer. All right, good, I'm glad you got useful information out of this. All right, let's get into the next app, jokes for everybody. Bring this back into here, and let's see what they ask. Ricardo says, your channel is awesome. Thank you, Ricardo. Ours is a jokes app. We are number three for chitis, uh, jokes in Spanish, okay. As we are starting to do ASO in Spanish, now we are focusing on English ASO and we are top 10 in USA. USA, could you please give some advice and top three in USA and Google Play? Great, this is great. So let's, let's try this. So I guess this is what chitis, he says he's number three for chitis. Might be in the Mexico market, but let's see. Okay, he's number one. Looks like that for that Spanish term. So congrats on this. And I'm in the US market anyway. Okay, so I guess we saw the localization, so that's why it's there. The, oh man, my short description is not coming up. Okay, so this is, this is great. This is what we're testing on our end too with Google Play. So here are things we're testing. Now I'll just, te tell you guys what we're testing on here as well. And this is Ricardo, I believe. All right, Ricardo. So one thing is, uh, fortunately, my, my where's my little plugin is not working for me to see your short description. I have a little plugin that allows me to see the short description. But I would say the fact that you're using jokes up here is very important. The, the more left that you can get your keyword, the better. So that's good. I don't know if repeating this is going to work. Maybe it has worked in the Mexico market for you guys. And so think about that a little bit. I think if it does work in the Mexico market, then maybe it'll, it'll work for you. I'm just hesitant on repeating stuff. It was very useful back in SEO, like 2005 range, but I just feel like Google's a lot smarter now. Here, oh, Google's translating for me. So here. So he does repeat it here. So maybe it's working for you because you're number three and you're repeating the same term a couple of times. I just don't know if it's gonna work for everybody, but just something to keep in mind here. And then we'll change the language to English. This is Spanish and Google is just translating it for me. Okay, this is your English. So again, if you're trying to go after jokes, then you definitely, kind of like what you did in the Spanish localization, you wanna lead off with jokes, not just the joker. So that's one thing I thought I saw the short description. Man, what happened? Your screenshots look so much better than the other one. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like this screenshot. I don't like your Joker one that you have in the US. Oh, whoops, which way? I like this a lot better. I mean, I don't like this as much as I like the US, the Spanish one. I also think that your screenshots can be better improved. You know, I was talking to somebody about this. Oh, yay, here we go. Great collection of free and best jokes. Again, I think what you want to do is 
have the best keywords on your left, right? Here's where we try to optimize the short description. So definitely the short description needs to have some conversion rate optimization. Great collection doesn't mean anything. I like the 1,000 plus. I might move this and I might actually move the, um, make this a little bit shorter to get the, the jokes in. So like joke books by the Joker, daily fun jokes, whatever it is. So optimize the, the title that way. And let's see, people are starting to come with questions and ideas as well. But here, great collection. I don't think anything that says like great, easy, best. I just stay away from, I just say, why are you the great? So like if it's thousand plus jokes a day, then that's how I would lead off with. The other thing that we're testing here too is keyword density. You know, we I w I've been trying to do a lot of analysis on figuring out what the dense, right density is because most people say it should be under 3% or around two to 3% for a keyword that you're targeting. But I just found a few different apps that are very spammy level that are ranking really high with very little downloads. Well, compared to its competitors and ranking in the top 10. So we're testing that a lot too, is keyword density and long description. So my recommendations net net would be try your, maybe you've already done this, try the Spanish localized app icon. I like that better. Put jokes instead, lead off with jokes instead of the Joker and then AB test your screenshot because I do think that right now it's a little plain. So, you know, the, what I like to do is go straight into, you know, the, the biggest collection of, I just said biggest thousand plus jokes crack up your friends and family because that's why we want jokes we want to make people laugh and so think about what are the benefits what do people want what do people want to feel after using your app and how do you incorporate that language in your screenshots so those are the things i would be testing okay anybody have any ideas let's see okay maybe not joe any questions or any suggestions you always have that all right let's get into some of these two. All right. Demetrio says Google ads suggest keywords. Where do I find that? I think it's in the keyword planner. You can try that Demetrios too. James says that is awesome. I'll have to check that out and implement that into my next giveaway. Cool. Let me know how that goes, brother. Okay. All right. Man, lots of questions. All right, here we go. Aditya, Dita, Ditya, sorry, I'm butchering everybody's name. I'm planning to release a VPN app. What do you think is VPN too difficult to rank? <laughs> Probably Ditya. Like, I know I actually have a VPN client, and a lot of it is doing a lot of gray black hat strategies to rank really well for VPN. It's tough, man. It's going to be tough. So, unless you have a budget for it, be, you probably need to spend some money on different campaigns for VPN. Okay, I already did that. Khalid says, how much do you think subtitle is effective and which localization do you recommend? Great question. Subtitle is pretty effective and I always try to have the right keywords in there. So yes, the title is gonna be the most important. Subtitle is the next important thing in terms of keyword ranking. The localization, look at your competitors where they're ranking for or look at which markets they're ranking for and that's how i would start figuring out but you have to test right i think check out my video it's called how do you translate any keyword in any language like it's a free option so think about the bigger markets one of my friends he didn't even do any research he and a client of ours he just started targeting the russian market and so and he saw really good results with that he was running apple search ads but then that gave us a signal that said hey maybe we should localize for the aso in russian because he's doing good in terms of search ads in russia so maybe you can use search ads or google adwords to test out different markets and which ones are doing well in terms of a cost per install and then conversion rate as well James says, how can I view my competitor's name in Spanish Mexico app store? Yeah, great question, James. They app store doesn't make it so easy right now. Cause I used to be able to do this here. Let's see if it still works. I could try it from one of my apps, but 
anyways, like you used to just do this, the MX. That usually still works. Sometimes I've seen it not show anything. Oh yeah, okay, here it is, it's working. All right, here is how you do it, James. <laughs> you just change this country code. So you see this URL, it used to say US. It's apps.apple.com slash MX. And then you can see your competitors, Spanish Mexico. So this is note to self, quick reminders. He's using a lot more, a lot better keywords here, I would say. Ricard or oh, Manuel is, and here's his localized Spanish Mexico localization. Okay, cool. Uh, about that free campaign, I don't know after one. Reza, about that free campaign, which free campaign are you talking about? Are you talking about my free promotional campaign? So let me know. Let me know. If that's what you're talking about. If you are, then I'm happy to answer that question. Okay. Reza says, if I get a review from someone who is in London, then do you people in the US see that review? So Reza, if it's in the Google Play Store, you see all the reviews for worldwide. If it's in the iOS, it really you only see the reviews in your country. Kind of sucks. Uh, Ak Akrati says, how can we automate daily keyword ranking changes to spreadsheets? I'm not a developer, but I'm sure there's an easy way to do that if you want to do it. I think what I would like to do, what I'd usually do with any of these ASO tools here, let me get these ASO tools back into this. They will give you an email report every day. I know AppFollow does this, so you can do up to 20 keywords for free, but you know, even at Radar, you can do this, the keywords you're tracking, just see it on a daily basis and just see where it is. App Annie, another great source. So. I don't know if you need to put in the spreadsheet unless you really, really want to, but hey, there's an option there. Uh, do, 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 do. do you know any site which is best for paid reviews? There were a couple of different sites in there. I, I don't want to recommend anything because what I want to say is be careful, right? With iOS, we've been a little bit more aggressive in our paid reviews. On Google Play, we're a little less aggressive just because Google will just penalize you, take your app out, and you'll be done with it. So just be very, very careful. So I don't want to make any recommendations publicly because you use it, and I don't want you to blame me if anything happens to your app. So I'm sorry. Wanderson, hey, what's up? From Rio de Janeiro. Cool, brother. That's awesome. All right. All right. Lots of good questions in here. Okay. Wow. Perfect. Thank you, Steve. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting lost in all these questions. All right, let's get into the next app. And this app, Fit to Do, is a good one. Let me hide this. Victor says, the more you focus on, the better it is. I would be happy if you could focus on the App Store page of the app and the onboarding experience. So this is actually a Mac app. Right. So let's look at the Mac and then I'll download it. I had it in my other computer. I'm not even showing you guys my screen. There you go. All right. Here's the fit to do from Victor generate personal workouts, stay fit, gain muscle, lose weight. Now I always like before and after pictures or people with fitness, especially for a fitness app. So I, I almost want, to show, I think you should show that rather than what you currently have. So I want to try to find pull like sweat with Kayla or something else. Sweat. So let's see if I can find sweat with Kayla. I feel like with fitness apps, it's always good to show somebody working out. Like if you think of anything related to going to your gym, they always have people in like workout clothes. So you see people being fit and I feel like that's more productive than showing or effective. Yeah, here you go. Free trial for new members. So again, here, like you see people doing workouts, whereas I look at yours and it's just blah, right? So that's the main thing. It's just blah to me. It's like, I don't care about seeing this. I want to see people working out and I want to see fitness. So I think that's what I would try to do exercise in 3d. I don't know if that's really what I care about. 
yeah, I don't know if I care about it that much. So again, think about what your competitor is doing, like some of the popular apps like Kayla. Obviously, she has a huge social media platform, but you can look through some of these other ones like Jillian. Let's see this. Studio. And just get inspiration from this. This is what I do whenever I do keyword or screenshot optimization for clients is I look at some of their competitors and I see what they're doing, what they're what they have. And that gives me inspiration on what I should do my, with mine. Look, it says sweat, 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 sweat. I don't know why they have sweat so much. Maybe they're trying to go off of this and tricking people that this, maybe they're bidding on sweat <laughs> keyword and they're putting sweat, 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 sweat a lot. So new content added every day, really big benefit, especially for like people like me. I, I like that. I like to do new workouts. I actually don't repeat any workouts. Treadmill classes with inspiring instructors. Again, these this these are great screenshots. I would want to make the text bigger, but I like the I like the screenshots here. And again, you see people working out. Your screenshots just see. I don't want to see my computer. I look at my computer every day. I'm going to work out because I don't want to see my computer. Here we go again. People working out, right? So you probably I love this where she's kind of in front. Don't know if it's necessary. But I would say that's the main thing that is missing from your particular app. All right, let's see. Keywords. I think this is good. Ah, can't even download it. Sorry, I can't go through my onboarding process. I'm on my slow computer, but I think that should be helpful enough. Just kind of make sure. During the onboarding process, what I would try to do is test a lot, see what people are doing. A friend of mine told me, oh man, I think it's called UX Cam or smart look it gave me these resources. It's going to be a future podcast, but there are tools out there. Yeah, this is UX Camp, where you can see how people are using your app through their technology. So think through that, like what are, where are their eyes tracking? This is give you a, a real visualization of how people are using your app. And during the onboarding process, you want to see uh, a friend of mine and I think a podcast guest share. Everybody's a friend of mine. Okay. So when I say friend of mine, everybody's a friend. <laughs> past podcast guest Murphy, he was saying that we just did the podcast episode this past Tuesday. So check out that episode, really good stuff. But he said he brought his onboarding experience from seven screens to four and he saw an increase in conversions. And how did he do that? He essentially was looking at somebody using his app, his friend, a, a friend of his using his app and she, she closed out of the app. She's like, that's too long. I don't want to go through it. He's like, what? So he took out the two screens that he was like, well, I don't really need those two screens as much. I can ask it later on and he brought it down for seven to four. And then you saw boom, immediate increase in conversions. So in terms of the onboarding process, think through what you're saying. Like what I also try to do with the onboarding is sort of repeat stuff that are in your screenshots because you don't want, you want to remind people why they downloaded the app again. The screenshots are there to sell for you to download. And then the onboarding experience, use the same words to repeat and then have them say, oh yeah, this is why I downloaded it again. And then it'll lead to a good conversion by having the pricing on the onboarding. So that's one of the best practices too. All right, Victor, hope that was helpful. Let's get, we got about 15 minutes left. Let's get into some of your questions as well. And then we'll say goodbye. So have a good weekend, everybody. All right. Reza says for a $2 paid app, what is a good conversion rate for impressions of product page reviews? What's the best you saw? Just give us the numbers. All right, Reza, I wish I could, but it really depends on the app, man. Like for a paid app, I think it, it's how niche it is. So I think for a friend of mine, Marco, who has a calculator app, he's going to have higher conversions because the keywords that he's ranking for, like TI-84 or any of these particular keywords, the calculator keywords, you want to see a high conversion. So anywhere from, I would say 30 to 50%, but for th that's a paid app too. But an app like yours it depends on the keywords you're going after. So the more targeted you can go for that particular keyword, the better it's going to be. And what I always recommend for paid apps is try search ads, because then if you find a model that works, if you can get that cost to where you're obviously making money, then you're going to really skyrocket revenues. And that's exactly what Marco did. But product downloads, product page views for free apps. Usually I try to be around the 70 to 90 mark. That's where at least the 70% mark. That's where I want to be because they're on the product page they're on your product page, right? They should want to download your app. And so 70% and up is what I try to really rank for. 
If you remove languages in Google Play, does it help in keyword rankings and downloads? Ricardo asks, I don't think so, Ricardo. I think you actually want to localize. From what I've, from our experience, it's the more localization that you have in Google Play, the better it's gonna be for everything. So the more you can localize and more cost effectively you can do that in Google Play, the better it's gonna be. All right. Reza has a lot of questions. I wanna know that app is ranking from different keywords. Not sure what your question is, Reza. I want to know that is app ranking different from keyword rankings. If an app gets reviews and downloads, then it ranks better for any keywords that I put in updates. Oh, okay. So yeah, the reviews actually do make a big difference. So the more reviews that you can get for your particular app and the more downloads you can get for your particular app, obvious, being Captain Obvious here, the better your keywords are going to rank. And so keyword optimization is important to for as a, as a foundation but you're gonna have to do a lot more to get it to rank, especially for competitive keywords, you're gonna have to do a lot more in terms of downloads and reviews to get it to show in the higher ranks. Are there major benefits for using app preview video on the app store? Great question, something that I've covered in the past, but in terms of the category, it depends on the category of apps. App preview videos have shown to actually decrease conversions sometimes. So it seems like if you're a game, app preview videos are pro important, they help, universally think generally speaking, but if you're a non-game, then not so much. So I wouldn't spend too much money on this and I would AB test because it really depends on the category app and your type of app. But for games, definitely a yes. For everything else, I would say, if you can do it cost effectively, do it and AB test because sometimes you see a decrease, which is really crappy because you paid for that video. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. Don't do V. <laughs> Voice Tech says, don't do VPN. I tried with budget, didn't up, end up well. And then somebody wants to buy your app, Voice Tech, so check that out. All right. Flutterus, for US market, should we consider also Spanish keywords as localization? N no, not really. So the, you know, the tip that I always give Flutterus is that the Spanish Mexico localization is actually indexed by the US app store. So if you put English keywords in there, in the Spanish Mexico, then you should see a nice bump in your U in your, you should be, you'll, you'll be able to double the keywords that you're targeting in the US market. If you want Spanish keywords, just put in Spanish Mexico. They, they help each other out regardless. All right. Shirag says, please check my app, fill out the form and you're just going to have to wait, bro. So I'm sorry. All right. All right. Some of these questions is, D says, first time Steve is hosting while sitting down. I know, it feels so weird. I don't like to be sitting down. I wanna be up. All right. Oh my God, Shirek. All right, best ASO tool, free and paid. Look, I think App Radar, Demetrius said in the comments below, is one of the better tools because from a cost perspective and the data is very accurate from what I've seen. So it is very good. All right. All right, yep, 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 yep. Thank you guys for helping me out. Lucas says, how can I send one of my apps to get some of your feedback? Thank you, engineering peers. It's appmasters.com slash audit. Cool. Uh, some of these comments. Uh, <laughs> Ekafen says, how to buy your course free? <laughs> Funny, Ekafen. All right. All right. Uh, What is this? Hey, bro, can you say three times Panda is the king? It's for my followers, please. Where are you using this? Please share where you're using this. But Panda is the king. Panda is the king. Panda is the king. All right, cool. <laughs> the things I do for you guys, I swear to God. It's funny. All right, repeating keywords on App Store affect positively. I think we answered this, Pinky. Uh, I haven't seen good results with this. It's worth testing. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I think it really depends, crappy answer, really depends on the app and the keyword because some people have reported to me, it's helped them. I've tried it out on my own. I was like, cool, let me try it out. Hasn't helped us. So it really depends on probably the, the keyword and how competitive it is, it is and your type of app. Cool, Panda, thanks. All right, Panda, let me know what you do with it, all right? Come on, bro. I don't wanna end up in some weird websites. 
D says, is it recommended to go for push notifications for or in-app messaging? So I think both, right? You want both. And we did this for a client. We have to figure out what the results are. But the first seven days are so critical, right? So push notifications are great for bringing users back into the app, right? You think about that. In-app messaging is great for getting people to do certain things in the app. Cross-promotion, sale, whatever you want to do. So you really need both. They have their own specific goals and criteria that you want to meet with that particular thing but push notification great to bring people back in-app messaging look if they're not in the app they're never going to see it right great for cross promotion for any sales that you're doing any type of promotion you're doing getting them to try other features so definitely have both in there all right cool let's see keep your questions coming in i've got a few more minutes because i, I gotta run Pena says thank you steve thank you Pena. or I'm butchering that name. Pinkage. All right. <laughs> Pavia says, hey, Steve, here's a screenshot of my UA stats from Google Play. I got 1.3 million downloads. Can you give me your opinions about it? I can't see your screenshot. So fill out that form or email me, and then I'll give you what I can tell you. The game is called Evil Kid. OK, well, email me, steve at masters.com. As if gaming says best way to find keywords with low competition and high score. So this is, I'll answer this question. And for those who are, have been in my audience for some time, like, dude, I see this said this so many times already. Okay. So here's what you do, right? Go to app, follow, put in your app, copy and paste all these keywords that you want because Apple is recommending these particular keywords to you. So do a lot of keyword research and then put them into a tool called App Radar, and then you'll find all the difficult difficulty keywords. What I like about App Follow is you can see the search traffic scores, so you can already filter out with the keywords that have high traffic, and then you need another tool like App Radar to find out the difficulty. That's the way to do it. Okay. And for the course for free, so maybe yes, I am probably thinking about doing that, making the course for free and give doing a giveaway. So spoiler alert, good idea. I can find. All right, guys, any other questions from you guys? If not, I appreciate you. I hope there's some shares out there. Definitely share it out. I'm at Steve P young on all your social media profiles. So Instagram everywhere else next week, I'll have my real studio set up and I'll be standing once again, because that's what I prefer to do. Getting antsy right now already, but thank you guys for joining. Okay. Some questions coming in. But thank you guys for joining. Stay tuned for some of next week. we do have a guest. The other thing I want to mention to you guys is I'm doing a thing with theorem reach and what we're doing is roasting your app. So if, especially if you've got a game and you need help on the monetization side, similar to what we've been doing with the app audit, but we're going to do it in partnership with theorem reach. So go check out theorem and then look at roast your app. So fill out that form, especially if you have a game and we'll help you with some of the retention, some of the monetization and some of the growth too. So really great things that we're going to be doing with theorem reach in the future, but that's something in particular with theorem reach, especially for games. Go fill out that form. If you want your app audited by just me, just go to appmasters.com slash audit. All right, start roasting apps. Yeah, I like that, right? Good stuff as usual. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for being here, my friend. Daryl, thanks, Steve. Thanks, Daryl. Appreciate you, my friend. All right, Adolfo says, any words and images and screenshots count as keywords? Great question, Adolfo. So what I have heard is that yes, all right? But I don't know what the big weight is. So again, depends on the keywords. It depends on a lot of different factors, but from what I've heard, especially on Google play and especially, and on iOS as well, that keywords in your screenshots do actually help as well. One thing to test, it might be worth it or not, but this is an SEO strategy is maybe naming your screenshot files with the keywords that you want to target. So an SEO strategy that we use that a lot of people use is, you know, that whatever keyword you're trying to target on a particular page, you have images, but those images are called what that keyword you're trying to target. So something to consider with some of the images that you might be using in your screenshots, maybe name those files as the keywords you're trying to target. All right. Hope that was helpful. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this new layout. It'll be better next week. I promise you. And I will catch you guys next week where we're, I think we're doing a, let me check this real quick. I see you guys have more questions in this.
cancel. I just do this. Yes. So next next Friday, we're gonna go live with Theorem Reach founder, co-founder, CEO Tom Hammond. We're gonna be roasting your games and apps. So we're gonna help you with the growth, everything that we've kind of covered from an ASO standpoint, from I think less ASO, more on the growth standpoint, and then more on the monetization standpoint. So we're gonna really download the apps, kind of show you, I've done this in past weeks, show you what the app is, go into the app and how you can better monetize it. And we'll do our part in making sure we have the sort of the apps already downloaded and sort of study the apps already, but go check it out, theoremreach.com. It's gonna be called Roast Your Apps. And last question, Pankaj, I missed some of his live. Yes, it's the replays already on YouTube. So it will be there forever. All right, guys. And so is Panda is King. That's going to be somewhere forever as well. Thank you guys for joining. I will see you guys next Friday, same time, 9 a.m. Pacific, where we'll be roasting your apps with Tom Hammond from Theorem Reach. So enjoy the weekend. I appreciate you. I'm humbled by everybody that joins here every single week. And I'll see you guys next week.